Hello everybody and welcome to part four on how to cure an ear infection. Uh, I've done three parts on this already. This is the fourth part because I have discovered a couple new things. One very critical thing that has made this ear infection that I am currently going through a lot more bearable and probably the best thing I've found yet. Uh, for the answer to how to cure the ear infection in terms of its symptoms. Okay, first, uh, this comes with a little story, so let me tell you this really quick. I had gone to my doctor last week, because I felt an ear infection coming on, and I usually get a steroid shot, which I've talked about in previous episodes. Uh, it's a combination shot of Decadron and Debimedrol, and Decadron is a short, um, quick-acting steroid, and Depamedrol is a long-acting steroid that takes over after the Decadron wears out. I usually do that when I feel an ear infection or glue ear coming on in my sinuses. If I get there fast enough, it really prevents it from getting bad. So when I go to the doctor to get this shot, my regular doctor wasn't in. He was on medical leave, so they, gave, they put me with another doctor who was willing to give me this shot, who they also give this shot for... for um, allergies as well to some people and he said I'll gladly give you the shot but he wanted me to explain to him my ear condition so I went through my whole history of my ears and he saw it in my file and he said to me he said there's this nose spray uh, he was an expert on nose sprays and he was telling me about all the different nose sprays out in the market but there's one that does something remarkably different and we'll get to that in just one second the things that normally that I would treat the ear infection with, that's why you see all these bottles off to the side, is um, nose sprays that I've used in the past. And I've asked him about some of these things. And the most common thing is uh, something like an allergy nasal spray, something similar to Flonase, which is a very commonly used thing for... Uh, an ear infection to clear out the nose because if remember an a, an infection will come through the nose and then into the ears and it try to drains down the sinuses. So your first line of defense is try to keep your nose clean and they a lot of times they do that with an allergy nose spray such as something similar to Flonase. This particularly will only work to a minimal degree. The reason is, is because this is for allergies. It's not really for a sinus infection. So what it does isn't what you need it to do. It's not going to go into the eustachian tubes and drain the fluid from the inner ear. This is just for allergy related symptoms to make you breathe a little better. It will only provide minimal relief, which I have talked about in previous episodes, not the answer. Second, You've heard about this for quite some time, I'm sure, on a lot of commercials, Zycam. Uh, Zycam is a very popular thing. Um, it's no drip. Obviously, it's the nasal spray. For They always recommend it for when people, they say they're, they're getting a head cold. Uh, you take this and it'll shorten the time of the head cold. I've taken this several times. I've taken this for several different things. It doesn't have much effect either. Um... The whole point of Zycam is to use zinc to your advantage. Well, if you look at the ingredients of Zycam, as I'm looking at right now, um, I'm not really seeing zinc as a big factor in this. So, um, it works, again, to a minimal degree, but um, it, it does not have the effect that you would want it to have to really shorten colds to that degree. Minimal, again, these two are minimal degrees of success. Third, uh, if you have something like what I grew up with, um, Beccanase AQ, which is another very common, now it's a very expensive uh, nose spray. This is a nose spray that is, will help clear, will help, help you breathe better. Um, but it will not cure the problem either. Again, it's for a limited amount of time. And what it does is it shrinks the membranes to a smaller degree for something like Afrin, which we'll get to in one second. Um, 
So, I mean, basically this is a non-addictive version of Afrin. Speaking of Afrin, let's just get to that one for a minute. Afrin, the reason Afrin works so well is because it, it shrinks the membranes uh, up in the nose and the and sinal cavity, so it, it makes your breathing area larger so you can breathe and does drain some of the mucus to a different spot for a period of time. The problem with Afrin is you can't take it for over three days because it has a rebound effect, which means these membranes, which were, when you stop taking Afrin, will all of a sudden swell up, and then your problem is worse than it was before because you're just delaying the problem instead of solving the problem. So Afrin is not even in this list right now because that is an emergency use, but it's really not gonna have any effect uh, because it's going to actually be more painful down the line than these would. These are non-addictive nose sprays. Fourth, I discovered this, and this is an interesting um, nose spray as well. This is Propolis, okay, and this is made from beeswax. Beeswax is um, this is made by B and U. And it's 5% pure propolis, and it's basically, again, made from beeswax, and it's meant to clean uh, your nasal passages and really kind of prevent things from happening in there. Um, I've noticed some effect of it. It's doesn't, it doesn't, it's not great for an ear infection. It's more great as a preventative measure to keep your sinuses clean. Um, it's more effective than saline spray. Anything with beeswax is a, a medical proof uh, out there, so I, I do believe it does have use as well. And um, again, all these four have minimal effects uh, for what you need for the ear infection. They will help, but to a very, very small degree. What I'm going to show you now is the nose spray that he recommended to me that has really uh, made a huge difference in how I felt this time around with the ear infection as opposed to my other 38 years of suffering like hell. So without further ado, get these out of the way, I'm going to show you the real answer, which is this, okay? And this has been around for quite some time, and usually ENT specialists are the ones that recommend it. Uh, the ones that know what they're talking about. Every ENT specialist I've gone to has been a total dick. Uh, they don't tell you about this at all. You tell them your problems and they just tell you, uh, you know, to go take a Z-Pack. Which, by the way, number one, I took Sudafed for this ear infection as I always do. That always helps. That's a great help. Number two, prednisone. Okay, there's your local steroid for your topical steroid for you to take. They have it in both large pill and small pills now, which is actually pretty good. As I'll show you, the small pills are even better than the large pills. So, and they're 10 milligrams each. I've been taking 40 milligrams of that per day, two in the morning, two at night. You need your steroid, you need your Sudafed. You have to have the Sudafed and the steroid together at the same time for it to be effective to keep your sinuses clean. But, this is the key nose spray that everybody should know about that suffers from um, glue ear and other sinus problems when they have ear infections. And I'm gonna show it to you right now and you need a prescription for this. And if your doctor will recommend it to you, it's been on the market for years and it is called Ipotropium. Ipotropium, the difference between Ipotropium and all these other nose sprays, okay, is the fact that Ipotropium will go inside the eustachian tube and suck out the liquid. It literally dries up the liquid so the fluids can continue to drain. From a 1 to 10 with this ear infection that I've had, uh, the head cold that I've had, I, it hasn't gotten past a 3. And I couldn't be happier for that because I actually feel like a normal person. Uh, everybody else, when they get a, a head cold, you know, they go through a little bit. Um, but they don't go through the hell of landing in an ER with glue ear and being infected and the green mucus coming out and it taking three weeks. I mean, I'd probably be done with this head cold within a week 
Uh, it's already been about a week, so another couple of days I would assume to be done with this. Um, but he had said to me that this is the answer. His father had the same problem that I did, and this was the answer. Take it in conjunction with, like I said, the Sudafed and the, the prednisone or a steroid shot, something like that, to get a combination of these three. And these will be the answer to the ear infection. So far, in this first ear infection that I've had since he has recommended this to me, it has been a pleasure taking it. And it is a 0.03% uh, epitropium bromide nasal spray. I'll show it to you again. Okay, again, it is uh, a prescription. You have to have it recommended. It is not over the counter. Um, but it is vital when you're fighting an ear infection. And it, I'm sorry it only took me 38 years to come to this conclusion. And, but I wanted to let everybody know about this because it is very important for everybody who has suffered. I know the first video I did went viral and got like 160,000 views on it. And I hope this one does too because this is the most important piece, the extra piece of the puzzle to what I've told you before on some of the things to try and some of the things not to try. So again, guys, if there is anything more, I have done everything literally from nose sprays to... Um, to steroid shots, to um, steroids, to even um, when I recently did a uh, stem cell shot uh, to help solve this problem as well. Now there's no, there's no way of knowing how well the stem cell shot is working. I took it back in April of uh, last year, so that can happen over time, but it's not something I would um, not recommend. Uh, it usually has great uh, effects as it as well but the key that I have found ever since he put me on this and it, it usually takes effect within 12 to 24 hours you got to keep taking you got to take it one squirt in each nostril in the morning and one squirt each nostril at night and you take it for at least a couple weeks okay it's not something you can just take once and really um, think that's going to have this profound effect on you this is something that people will take for weeks if not months to get their sinuses uh, up and running perfectly, uh, but it's great for any type of sinus head cold. I will not go anywhere without it. If I'm going on vacation, it's going to be on me uh, at this point, in, ever in case I need it, because this has been a lifesaver, along with my other medications for uh, this type of ear problem. So thanks guys for joining me today, and if I have another um, update or review on anything new that I learned regarding ear infections, I'll be sure to let everybody know. This is Drew, signing off.